Hey guys, Harpunner here, and today I'm going to show you how to build a timed G-Bombs device, or um, really just a timer that you can use for anything. Now this is the incredibly complex version that has a code lock and DB activation mechanism and a whole bunch of safeguards to it, but um, I'm going to show you how to build a simple one in this tutorial, and uh, I'll make a separate one for this incredibly complex piece of kit here. But uh, what we have here over here is our artillery shell. Now I'm going to show you. Oh, I'm bad. I'm going to show you how this mechanism works to detonate that thing. So first of all, you click this button that arms the bomb. Um, I accidentally hit it earlier, so it's already armed. And then you press this button, it starts the countdown timer. Now, once it hits the 30 second mark, it'll start playing an alarm. And once the time is up, this bomb will detonate. Now, the best way to do that is honestly if I just decrease the time artificially, and I do that with a code lock that I've already input here. The time only gets modified when the code is input. And there you go. And there's a stop button on the back for when you have the code input correctly. And the, well, yeah. So. This is the incredibly complex version. Today's uh, today's one we'll be working with is the simple one, which I already have hooked up to a gadget, and it's the um, it's it's a much you can see the difference in the wiring between the two. Um, so this one's features are very simple. You can input a time. You can input it uh, on certain increments. Uh, there's a reset button for resetting the timer. Once this uh, starts, the timer starts counting down. It's very easy to stop. There's no safeguards. This is really just as bare bones as it gets as far as a customizable timer goes. But uh, in another story, I'll go over this wicked piece of kit, which I now use to uh, mess with my friends on Gmod. So uh, without further ado, let's get started. All right, so the first thing you're going to do... Uh, well, ugh, I, I can't speak today. It's it's my bad. I'm going to grab a little box. Um, now, you can use whatever you want. This is just a base for all the buttons, and I can like slip a bomb in there. I don't know. It's just It looks cool. I'm using it. Um, so the first thing I like to do is lay out the area. So I'm going to grab a screen. I'm going to say it's only one value. It uses a bigger font and it floors the value. I am not going to format in seconds because it gets weird when you do that and uh, the screen is not very big. And I'm going to put this, I'm going to put this one dead center. And as you can see, it displays time and it displays zero. That means that there's nothing on the timer right now. And um, if you were to wire it up to this, it would explode, but the wire wouldn't even work anyways because, well, it's not hooked up properly. Now I'm going to make an arming key. I'm just going to put it in the upper left. I'm going to toggle it because it looks cool when you do that. Uh, it, you, you can leave it as non-toggled. It doesn't matter as long as the value on is 1 and the value off is 0. And then I'm going to grab a big old do not press button for beginning the detonation sequence. And then last but not least, I'm going to get a stop button. Completely optional if you feel like... Uh, you don't want this thing to be able to stop, that's fine. Uh, there is no layout to this, it's just, you know, going to be how it is. Now, this I like to keep on toggle. Um, if you don't keep it on toggle, then you'll have to use an increment to keep it going, but I'm just going to leave this on toggle because that means it'll keep going. Uh, that also means this double axe is a stop button if you press it again. Again, if I, in the complex tutorial with the... Uh, awesome timer. I have a safeguard for that too. Basically everything has been thought of in the second timer. This is just a simple one if you want to make a, uh, a dumb little circuit. So actually, as a result, I'm going to get rid of the stop button just because I know it's redundant. All right, and you're also going to want to get your gates. Now the first gate you're going to want is an increment, increment decrement actually, and I'm going to slap this right beneath the timer. You're also going to want a subtract. Give it a different uh, extra. Put it here. You're going to want a timer. 
Make sure, by the way, that you can actually recognize which is which. All right, once you've got the timer, you're also going to want a less than or equal to, or actually I just do less than, because that makes it nice and easy. And this less than is actually gonna go up here. Oop, my bad. I'm going off of a uh, s uh, more modified um, version of the complex one. What I'm essentially doing is I'm fixing all the problems I previously had in my simple one and putting it into this tutorial. So it's like a learning experience for me too. And you're also gonna want an AND gate here. Nope, that's big. All right, this AND gate, by the way, that I put up here is going to be the output circuit. This output will go directly into the bomb and say detonate. I put it up here so it's nice and obvious I know exactly what to wire it to. Now the next thing I'm going to put on is a dynamic button. Now this I don't use too often, but I felt like it might actually be useful here. This dynamic button is going to control how much time we're adding or subtracting from the actual clock. Or um, rather, how much time we're adding or subtracting from the, uh, the total time the bomb is going to take to detonate. Now, I do 5 and 10. You can do whatever you want here, but just be aware that some weird things can happen, uh, if, depending how you do it. But, um, so for material on, I put 0. For material off, I put 5. Again, this is up to your discretion. Value 1, 10. Value off, 5. Again, up to you. And I'm going to place this here. And so when I toggle this, by the way, make sure it's on toggle, it sets which value is going to be used when you're incrementing or decrementing the timer. And what you're going to want to do with that is put the A on the increment and decrement on the output here. So now it switches between 5 and 10. Next thing you're going to want to do is get a normal button, or you can do another dynamic button if you want, uh, and then get a lovely plus and a lovely minus. Uh, again, not really setting this up in any particular order because it doesn't matter. But um, what I'm going to use for this is increment is to the plus and decrement is to the minus. And I almost forgot, these must not be toggles unless you're weird. But now, you can see, it increments the timer. But it's not showing up here. What's going on here? Well, to make it show up on the screen, you need to wire the output to the decrement. But the problem with that is that it won't subtract how much uh, how much the timer is running on, so you actually don't know how much time you have left. So I'm going to wire this to this subtract gate. And the subtract gate is A is going to be the increment decrement, and B is going to be the timer. And I'm going to set timers run to the button. Now what's going to happen here is that we set ourselves a time. It'll show up here there's 30 seconds on the clock. Now, this is stored here. It's also stored in the subtract gate because this is the default value and you're not actually subtracting anything because the timer is deactivated. Once you start the timer, however, it starts counting down. And I can do that. And the next button I'm going to add is a clear button just because I, I like my fives and tens and if it gets off in a weird number then it's just going to be weird but I'm going to put the reset button above the plus. So what should happen is once you hit that reset button, it resets the timer. Now that puts you right back to the value you want, and then I'll also have a clear button beneath that. Actually, no. Uh, I'm just saving. Well, heck with it. What? I'm, I'm dumb. It's okay, I'm dumb. Now where is the clear button? Oh god, it's gonna be weird. I didn't see a red clear button, so we're gonna have a blue clear button over here. Again, no particular layout. You can lay this out however you want. I'm just being messy. And the clear button will reset this. Boom! Now, the obvious problem comes when you subtract time. You think it would detonate it, but no, it wouldn't actually detonate it, and here's why. This little and uh, less than gate, my bad, 
what it's going to do is this is what compares the timer to whatever file you have for the detonate. Um, so what you're going to want to do real quick is get a constant value. Uh, I'm going to put just zero on there. You can modify it later if you know that doesn't work. But that constant value is just going to store zero. And so if the timer, oh, sorry, if the subtract is less than zero, then that will activate. And this AND gate is going to have that as the first value. So if this is true and the button is active, this will send the detonate single, signal. Now, I went over that really quickly, so let me uh, let me go back through. This, I used to arm the bomb, completely optional, you do not need it. This will start the timer, which is here. This timer is directly linked to this button. If the button's on, the timer's running. If it's off, it's not running. Now this button also, when toggled, will prime the first half of this AND. The thing is, both values need to be true, so if this button's pressed and the timer, or sorry, if the time remaining is less than zero, then it will detonate. And this whole circuit here is just, oh, my bad, is just adding time, subtracting it, whatever you do. There's no safeguard to keep this from being modified during the um, actual countdown. Again, that's going to be in the next tutorial. And so there you go. Now, I'm going to do a test. Alright, so I've spawned in a Tomahawk cruise missile, uh, just, you know, for a simple test. And I'm not going to wire this up to detonate, I'm going to wire up to launch, just because, well, you don't want it to detonate right there and blow up the circuit. Uh, that's for bigger bombs. So I'm going to set up arm, and I'm going to put it over to my arming key. And launch is going to be to this prominent little uh, gate here. Now, I've got it on 30 seconds. I'm going to reduce the time a bit so we can actually, you know, see that quickly how it works. And I'm going to press the button. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. There you go. It takes a moment. Uh -huh. Tomahawk has a delay. Boom. And so as you can see, it works. Oh, and um, there's there's that. So yeah, uh, pretty simple. In the next tutorial, I'll, I'll link it. But um, I'm gonna have the more complex circuit, which has all the features, all the lovely, lovely features. And I will see you all in the next video. As you can see, <laughs> um, a bit more work needs to be put into this timer, but it's a lot more foolproof, it has a lot more features, and overall is harder to disarm because you got a little code lock here. Anyways, that's all. I will see you all in the next video. Alright? Bye bye.